Hey guys, it's Bro you Whack, and we are starting this Tuesday morning off, or possibly Tuesday afternoon, with some hero changes that are going to be coming into Season 10, which includes the brand new hero, Venture. Now, all this information is coming from a director's take written by Aaron Keller, where, again, this whole blog post is really just focusing on what you can expect when it comes to hero change in Season 10, but also what is probably the most important question that even Aaron Keller is asking himself is if Venture canonically eats rocks. Blizzard, I don't care about people. PVE or even the story at this point, I just want you to answer the question as if they munch on rocks. Well, until they make an animated short featuring Venture, we know two things that's going to be happening to our favorite archaeologist. The first thing that has never been done before in the history of Overwatch is that the brand new hero Venture is going to be made available in competitive, they say a little bit early, and I have an idea of what that day could be because at least in Overwatch 1, when they released a brand new hero, they waited three weeks weeks to release them in competitive. Then in Overwatch 2, I'm pretty sure they changed it to where they waited two weeks to release it in competitive. So there's two options here. They can release Venture one week after Season 10 releases, which in case you guys don't know, it is on April 16th. Or what I hope that they do is just release Venture on day one. Just release it! to the masses. Let everyone play with the new archaeologist. Let everyone dig for rocks and cause mayhem in competitive. You see, typically this would be a terrible idea because with new heroes, not everyone knows how to play with the brand new hero. But at least in the case of Venture, they did have a trial period over a weekend. A lot of people got to play Venture. A lot of people learned how to play Venture in that time. But the other reason is that when it comes to Venture, they were pretty balanced upon release. I didn't see a lot of people complaining about them being overpowered at least at the levels of like Malga or even underpowered at the levels of Life Weaver. It really seems that they hit the nail on the head with this one and especially shows when you look at the hero changes they're going to be making to Venture or lack thereof. You see, they're going to be making a total of three changes. Now, these might not be all the changes, but they're going to be shifting some of the burst damage from Drill Dash and Clobber to the damage over time, I'm assuming. Along with that, they're going to be reducing the vertical knockback from Tectonic Shock, which actually might be a buff because one ignoring thing about Venture's ult is that you would send enemies in the air and you would have to wait for them to hit the ground to send another shock to actually do damage. So overall, they're not, they're really not changing Venture all that much. They, yeah, they might be making them worse because you don't get the initial burst damage, but you're still getting the damage with Venture, which is the most important part about them because combos is everything. But overall, it seems like Venture is going to be a very successful hero upon Season 10's launch. They don't seem very overpowered, they don't seem underpowered, and it seems like the community really likes to play them. And they're just an adorable hero, but in terms of other adorable heroes that are going to be getting changed in Season 10, uh, there's actually three tanks mentioned in this blog post. Junker Queen, Reinhardt, and the hero that's going to be getting a massive rework, Wrecking Ball. Quickly going over the Junker Queen and Reinhardt's changes because these are pretty insignificant. Junker Queen, uh, they're going to be buffing her Carnage, and then Reinhardt, they're going to be buffing his Earth Shatter. Pretty standard changes that you come to expect, but when it comes to Wrecking Ball changes, this, th this takes up more than just a sentence or two because there's a lot happening, and I probably will make a separate video just going over Wrecking Ball changes and showing them off, but at least in this director's take, what's going to be happening to Wrecking Ball is they're not only going to be improving the grappling hook, which includes reducing the cooldown of grappling hook when you don't enter ramming speed, which ramming speed is when you turn on fire <laughs> and spinning really fast with Hammond, but the most important part is that you will be able to retract yourself whenever you grapple with Hammond. You're going to be able to go and, and, and fish your line back into your wrecking ball with him which is awesome which means that you're going to be able to just have more control over the grapple rather than just having the committed length to what you're at but another massive change to Hammonds that's going to be more helpful if you have a Hammond one trick on your team is whenever you go and activate adaptive shield as Hammond you can now transfer some of that adaptive shield to your teammates to further explain this rework you can have up to 300 over health and you can transfer 75 over health to each teammate that you have. This is a fantastic change because the biggest problem with Hammond is that he never plays with the team because he doesn't have to play with the team. There's no reason for him to play with the team, but now you have a reason. I'm not 
not saying that they are going to play with the team, because I'll be honest, what's the reason for Hammer Mains to give out the Adaptive Shield other than just helping his team out? Well, that's kind of the whole idea of Overwatch, isn't it? To play as a team, but th there's a reason now, and it's to give shield to your teammates. But tanks aren't the only heroes getting changed. Somber and Tracer was mentioned in this blog post where, again, compared to the Hammond changes, it's pretty insignificant. As terms of a Somber change, the virus is getting a small nerf where the impact damage is getting reduced from 100 to 90. Not the biggest change, but any nerf is not going to be good news for any main of that hero. And in the case of Tracer, well, they actually didn't list any of the changes to her, which is surprising because Tracer is probably the hero that needs the most nerfs because, well, she's definitely the best DPS hero right now, and it's because she's kind of hard to stop, at least in lower ranks. And that is one way that they're trying to nerf Tracer, is trying to make her more punishable. Now, what that means, it's kind of left to interpretation. My interpretation is that they're looking to maybe nerf the amount of distance or time that you can actually recall with her, or maybe reduce the amount of distance that you can blink with her, just trying to make her more predictable in her movement, because that is a difficult part about her hero kit to try to predict and counter. But in terms of support heroes that were mentioned of getting changes in Season 10, Mora, Lucio, Iliari, and also Life Weaver are getting some changes. Now, in the case of Mora, Lucio, and Iliari, they're going to be shifting some powers from one ability to another. So they listed Iliari as an example, where they're going to be reducing the recovery time to the primary fire from a 0.2 seconds to 0.25 seconds, meaning that it takes a little bit more time to actually pop shot with her, which means indirectly you do less damage over time, but they're going to be increasing the overall heal per second from 105 to 115 to her secondary fire. So again, you get one buff and one nerf together to kind of even it out. But Life Weaver is getting a different change where they're just going to be straight up buffing him, and I think that Life Weaver can use all the buffs in the world because he's, he's always in an interesting spot. It never seems like he's the super best support, but yeah, I'll just leave it at that. <laughs> but while those are all the hero changes, we're going to be getting tons, and I mean tons of changes to microtransactions, to cosmetics, to mythic skins. I mean, we already got a preview of what could be the season 10 mythic skin, which is Talon Mercy. I made a whole entire video talking about that, uh, but I've also talked about in length the changes that's going to be happening with the battle pass. Most notably, Venture is no longer going to be locked away behind the premium battle pass, along with any future heroes and also past heroes. Every single hero is going to be made for free for every single player, which is probably the best change that should have been since day one I'm not gonna lie but I'm glad they're at least doing because it was so annoying asking someone to swap and then they are using the excuse sorry I don't have Malga they probably would have swapped anyway because they're doing one trick but at least they have no excuse now but overall, there is just so much to be excited about with Season 10, and I'm really deeming this season to be the best season to get back into Overwatch. Not the best season to play, but if you have friends that have a fallen out with Overwatch, uh, tell them... Tell them to come back and play because, again, all the heroes are free. Uh, cosmetics and the battle pass is more friendlier uh, than ever. And there's just a lot that's going to be going on with Season 10 and moving forward that you could be excited about, finally, because Overwatch was in a rough spot there. But until Season 10 comes out on April 16th, I love you guys. Thank you guys for watching my Overwatch 2 videos to come, and bye.